So with a free from time assessment, I won't bother with the ChatGPT. I'll just uh, you know do it myself correctly. And there is a bit of a chance that I'm taking here because I've done one question of the free from time assessment before, and I don't want to do the exact same one twice. So let me start and. And I'll get started. And uh, just a reminder, 20 minutes, it's a really short amount of time. So I'll try to explain some things. But even for me, I have to make sure that I don't waste too much time. Uh, I will try to explain most of the things I do, hopefully, correctly. Oh, let me start. Ooh, is it going to be the same question? No, it's slightly different. Good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll do this question. Yeah, it's a long question. I might not have enough time. So <laughs> let's see. Many experiments involving magnetic field. Yeah, uniform solenoid or Hamilton coils. I think I'm doing both. <laughs> um, give your answer. Yeah, Quinster an infinite solenoid carrying current. This made the circular loss using Ampere's law. Show that. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so let me do it this way. So I'm going to have this picture on the right so that I can draw some uh, figures that's going to be helpful in explaining. And after sketching some of those, then I will start typing up my answer. Uh, number one recommendation, don't leave uh, answers blank or, or don't simply say, see how touch the work. That's basically the same as blank. Uh, make sure that you have um, stuff written in there that can be matched up with your attached work. So, given this uh, current arrangement, or arrangement of currents, uh, first thing I need to do is to figure out the direction of magnetic field. So, on the left-hand side, I have a magnetic field uh, going into the screen. So, and on the right, I have magnetic field coming out. So, I think uh, my thumb should be pointing downward. So, that means within the... Within the um, solenoid volume, I should have magnetic field going this way. Now, you might know that it's uniform. And I think if you use it, I, I won't count it against you. And you might also know that the... Um, you might also know that outside magnetic field is zero. Uh, I prefer to prove it, and you have seen me do that in lecture. Uh, but if you are assuming it, I, I won't uh, count it against you. But I need to have a rough sense of in what direction is the magnetic field so that I can choose the Amperian loop in a way that uh, exploits the symmetries in the setup. And that loop looks like this, uh, going in this direction, in the dotted red line. Basically, in all the segments of the loops I choose, I have one of two features. Either my loop direction, uh, DL, is parallel to the magnetic field. That's a good one to have, because when I do B dot DL, it becomes simple. Or in my loop direction, the DL is perpendicular to the magnetic field, which is another good feature to have, because then my B dot DL is zero. So with this choice of Amperian loop, this is what I can say. I can say, state the Ampere's law, uh, the closed uh, line integral of B dot DL is equal to, and I'll write it down in this form first, 4 pi Coulomb constant divided by C squared times I enclosed. And this combination of constants, it can be written in a different way that's actually more common. Uh, you could write this as mu naught, permeability of free space but I'll go with this for, uh, for now. So, uh, and there's a whole symmetry argument you should make. There's a translational symmetry, which uh, allows you to argue that along this uh, segment, uh, th basically that B dot DL is constant. And there's other geometric symmetry. Uh, I guess both the translational and reflect reflection symmetry that allows you to argue that your uh, magnetic field is pointed this way so that you could argue that B dot DL along these segments is zero. 
and the B dot deal along the outside, again, uh, I prefer to prove it. And the way to prove it is you pull that segment out to infinity where you can argue that B dot B must be uh, approaching zero there, so B dot DL is zero. And then as you bring it in, uh, nothing changes. So even immediately outside the solenoid is zero. But I'll just say uh, outside B dot DL is zero. Again, prefer to prove it, but if you don't prove it, that's fine. Your textbook kind of does the same thing. So starting with this, all these simplifications allows you to simplify left-hand side down this far. B times the line integral of DL of the basically just the left segment. And, oh, I haven't specified the le uh, height of the segment. Let's call that arbitrary height h. You say that is equal to 4 pi, the, the constant you are using, times the current enclosed, and that's what you need to figure out. Uh, you are given the current density small n. So it's basically the current in a single wire times however many wires you have. So it's going to be i naught times n h. The left hand side will simplify b times h. That h is basically this line integral by itself. Uh, that's equal to that right hand side. So h is will cancel, which is what you are hoping for. Um, that um, this arbitrary parameter that I introduced is in, in the final expression, and this proves that b is equal to or pi k over c squared times i naught times n. Exactly the expression that I was trying to show. So uh, let me just uh, sketch it out briefly. So uh, from the right hand rule uh, within the solenoid, the magnetic field points downward. Um, and outside the solenoid, B is equal to zero. To exploit the symmetry in the setup for application of application of Ampere's law, we choose the Amperean loop of a rectangular shape uh, with a vertical size of a height h. Um, to the left of the right, um, the right edge of a solenoid, and to the right of the same edge. C attached the figure. This would be the use of a C attached, because this word description it might be hard to understand. Figures a lot clearer. Um, we start with the statement of the Ampere's law, which simplifies down to b times h is equal to 4 pi k over c squared times i naught n naught times times n times h and a and the arbitrary i h of the um, Period loop canceling out, we get the expression we were trying to drive. All right, how much time? Um, okay, nine minutes. That's so estimate the strength of yeah. So I think it, it's a matter of just plugging the numbers. So let's just do it. We have the formula already. Um, let's see, can I? Mm. Yeah, I got the formula written here. So let me just do it this way. If I copy and paste it here, that'll make it a little bit easier for the um, formula typing in process. 4 times pi times Coulomb constant divided by speed of light squared times uh, current 1 ampere times the, the loop density. So Radius, I don't care. Length, I don't. Uh, I do care. So it should be 800 windings divided by one meter. This should give me an answer in Tesla. Oh, that one meter is grouped wrong. 
that should give me an answer in Tesla. Yeah, so I get 0 0.0101 Tesla. Uh, P101 using the formula above. C attach the screen. Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha, using Wolfram Alpha is a lot as basically um, an online calculator. So, uh, you, I, in fact, if you do use Wolfram Alpha, I think I do prefer that you attach your work. So then, you know, I know that it comes from Wolfram Alpha and not, I don't know, ChatGPT. <laughs> uh, one is a calculator, the other one uh, is more sophisticated tool that can provide you with the help that you are not supposed to have. Uh, all right, how much time? 10 minutes? 9 minutes, okay. Um, although Solenoid provides the most, yeah, it's not downsize, it completely surrounds, yeah, make access, yeah, so Hamilton Coil might be good enough, might be better in terms of access. So, arrangement, yeah. Using BU Subvert's law, show that the magnetic field due to a single loop of coil is, oh, all right. <coughs> Yeah, that's challenging. <laughs> if you can't do this during the time limit, totally understandable. So you start with the statement of the Bio Savart's law, uh, which says, "I like the the infinitesimal version. The infinitesimal magnetic field contribution is equal to the mu naught, or that's a four pi k over c squared co coefficient times." Amount of current, that's what's generating the field, dl cross r hat, that gives you the direction, divided by r squared, because it's an inverse square law. So you need to have a picture in mind. Um, so if we all have a loop that looks like this, um, so one of the arguments that will help you with the calculation is, so consider two kind of representative uh, um, current segments. One here at the top, I guess that's coming out of the screen. At the bottom here, that's going into the screen. And your direction of our head is this way, our head is that way, uh, and this would be the direction of DL, DL. So you do DL cross our head, uh, or DL coming at the top coming out of the screen, cross our head. Um, yeah. Then your magnetic field goes in this direction as DL cross our head. Let me do it from my perspective so that I can make sure it looks right. I, uh, so DL cross our head. Wait, what? Uh, no, DL cross R head. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm doing it both from both perspectives. As long as I'm using my right hand, I'm not mirroring. It should be fine. So um, for the contribution from this segment, it should then be uh, so DL cross R head. Yeah. So going this way. Uh, yeah. So going somewhere like this. Let me do it from my perspective to be sure. So into the screen. Yeah. So um, what this is demo should it be demonstrating is that there is a pairwise cancellation of this perpendicular components so that the net magnetic field um, will only going this way. So you can just take the, the component along the z-axis for the net field calculation. So that justifies me doing just this. dBG is equal to 4 pi Ke over C squared times now DL cross R hat. Um, oh, DL and R hat, are they always perpendicular? I think they might be. Uh, so it's just IDL. And the only thing I need to worry about, yeah, because I think that and that is perpendicular, and like this segment and R, that would be perpendicular, yeah. So good. And then I have R squared, uh, which I'll need to express in terms of the, uh, so that's the radius, and that's G. 
So, right here. Let me do capital R. Um, so the lower case R squared, the distance squared should be the radius squared plus G squared. Now, stopping here doesn't give you the right answer. You have to make sure to take the only the G component. So with each one of these, you imagine this theta, then the G component of that, um, actually, uh, so this theta will be that theta. Um, so you are taking the sine theta of that. Uh, so let me write it as a sine theta for now. And the triangle that will help me figure out that uh, sine theta later is this triangle theta uh, R T. So uh, sine theta should end up being uh, the R divided by the square root of the, the hypotenuse r squared plus g squared. So with all that, db is 4 pi k e over c squared. I'm almost there. I'll double check the time to make sure that I won't run out of time. Raised power of 3 halves. So uh, let's see how much time do I have. Four minutes, it might be enough. So here, um, so the final step that I need, I just need to integrate this around the ring um, and that integral is actually super easy because nothing here depends on the parameter as you go around the ring the fact that uh, dl and r hat was uh, perpendicular didn't change the distance even doesn't change so basically this integral around the ring it ends up being just integral around the dl to pi r that's it so you get the uh, answer of 4 pi k over c squared times i times r over all those constant factors times the integral, which will be just 2 pi r. And because the question already told you the expression you are getting to, you can compare that and see that you are right. Did I miss it? Oh, oh I made a mistake. In the statement of Biot-Savart's law, there's a divided by 4 pi here. So that cancels that out. <laughs> so I had a mistake in the statement of the law. So without that mistake, you have 2 pi, 2 pi, k over c squared, i r squared, um, g squared, yeah. So um, we... Um, we work out the direction of the infinitesimal magnetic field contributions, uh, um, magnetic field contributions uh, according to Biot-Savart's law. The components perpendicular to the g-axis cancel out, so we can just uh, take the component perpendicular, uh, parallel, uh, parallel to the g-axis and integrate them around the ring uh, to get the result. Uh, we do need to work out the geometry, C attached, to get an expression for the sine theta for taking the component of the parallel. Oh, to the g axis um, and the integral ends up being simple because none of the um, parameters depend on the parameter that varies as we go around the loop. See attached for details. I think if I saw this, I'd feel comfortable enough. Uh, like reading this description and then seeing this, I can see. Oh yeah, they kind of match up. So, all right. I got what two minutes? One minute. In the Hamilton. Uh, yeah, I don't have enough time to do this. Nearly. Yeah. So. Um, I know I can do this in Sage Math, but I have one minute left and I can't do it in Sage Math in 
less than a minute. Uh, attach the finish the work. <laughs> so I'll leave it there and uh, I'll uh, uh, I'll start building up. Uh, yeah, it's gonna submit automatically. I'll let it do that. And uh, let me just uh, uh, start building the stuff in SageMath. Uh, do I need this? Um, I don't really need it, but let me just uh, uh, minimize it. So for SageMath portion, I'll use uh, Sage cell. Um, so what I need to do is I need to build an expression for B total. Uh, that's going to be the magnetic field due to, uh, due to the two uh, coils. So, uh, I need to build in some variables. Um, yeah, it'll do that. Uh, and I, yeah, I'm pretty sure, let me time myself doing this. Uh, now, I'm doing it this way now because, um, because uh, now there's no time limit, but like if I were doing this in a hurry, I might not actually use uh, SageMath because, um, it's, it's actually more time consuming. <laughs> um, so let's current R C. I think that might be enough. Um, oh, I also need a D from the descriptions there. So B total is going to be B1 plus B2. Let me build the B1 and B2. B1 is going to be basically this expression. 2 pi times ke divided by c squared times i times i squared divided by um, g squared plus r squared raised to this power. Um, but we need to shift it. Uh, you, we, so this is the expression if the loop was right at the center, g equals 0. We need to shift it a little bit to the left to g equals minus d over 2. So what the procedure will be is wherever I see G, I replace that with a G plus D over 2. And you can kind of test it out. Plug in G equals 0. Then uh, like for this location, it looks like it's for a location that's a plus uh, D over 2 from the loop. That looks right. So, so that's a B1, magnetic field due to the left loop. B2, magnetic field due to the right loop, will be this thing except with a minus sign here. So that's B total. Let's just print B total to make sure that I have it. Yeah, I got something. So for the question, what they were asking, um, show that the first and the second derivative with respect to dt is zero. Like show that this is zero and then that is zero. So I can just take the derivative. Um, der derivative if. E, uh, with respect to G. I think that's going to give me something. Oops. Uh, B total with respect to G. Yeah, it did something, right? I think that's right. Um, and out of that expression, I need to substitute in a G equals 0. So this is giving me a function of G. Um, but I, I don't want that. I want, after taking the derivative, I need want to substitute the g equals 0. 0. Yeah. So I'll say print uh, result of the um, diff b total g subs g equals 0. And then I'll print that. And then for the second line, it's going to be the uh, same thing, except it'll be second order, second order. Oh, what? Oh, oh I need to plug in, uh, um, plug in. Uh, so this is true for any separation, but um, the... Second derivative only goes to zero if uh, d now is equal to um, r. So you actually need that. So. Um, what? You can see that this is, uh, I think, uh, 
equal to oh no 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 there's a slight difference seven five oh, what are you doing to me um no oh, yeah yeah i think we're fine i have r to the fourth power here in the numerator in the denominator um yeah so uh i can i can tell it to assume that r is positive so assume r is positive yeah good <laughs> it wasn't doing some of the simplifications it could because if r is complex then this uh, is, you know substitution would have been like so so actually i don't think i need to do this substitution here i can do this out here um, so after assume r greater than zero. Yeah, good. And just to make sure it's not a, I don't know, freak accident or whatever, uh, we could uh, do this, uh, print result of, because now the third derivative shouldn't go to zero because uh, there's no reason for it to. Um, so for third derivative, uh, maybe it goes to the zero. It might still. Um, if it goes to zero, I'll check the fourth derivative. Fourth derivative definitely shouldn't go to zero. There's at some point where some higher order derivative doesn't go to zero. So let me try the fourth. All the odd derivatives might be going to zero for symmetry reasons, like for the reason this was going to zero. So this is just like a double check to make sure the code isn't doing something weird. Yeah, that there it is. So let me just... Uh, uh, paste this into my work and how much time did I take uh, for that I took yeah six minutes that's a long amount of time so if I was under time limit like if I had three minutes then I know I could do this I might not be wasting time with the uh, <laughs> sage math but um, this time I could because I was already outside the time limit and um, so I did so all right, I think that's uh, good enough. Um, yeah, so let me just paste in the work and then move on. So as I've said uh, before, I do recommend that you um, that you organize your work. You know, don't do what I'm doing right now, uh, kind of pasting in basically what is a scratch work, but. Um, to make sure you include the work because um, otherwise what you do it's a lot harder to make a sense of what you do if there isn't some attached to work i'm not saying that i can always make a sense of what you do if there's attached to work but the chance of me being able to understand goes way up uh, when there is attached to work so anyways uh, let me attach this so um so yeah th this is a long question when i saw those four parts i kind of knew I couldn't finish it in 20 minutes. <laughs> um, but um, so I finished in maybe 25 minutes, 26 minutes. Um, it, it's, a, you know, it's long, but not unreasonably long. You definitely should be able to do parts A and B and make a good progress on parts C. That I, I do believe is possible for uh, a lot of people. So anyways, because these are all manually graded, it's not... Um, and after the due date for me, which will be, uh, I guess, after this Friday, I should be able to see the key icon as a Tesla student. Um, yeah. So I think that's it for this demo. Uh, um, thank you for those of you joining. <laughs> Bye.